Hey guys, this is Ashen, and today I'm going to do a break it down commentary on my industrial warehouse build. So let's start with these windows. While looking through Pinterest and Google, the one thing these industrial builds had in common were these huge black metal frame windows. I'm using the jail partition and dance poles for the thin frames. Because I'm going for a vintage industrial look, the flagstone loft underneath the windowsills gives a great unfinished cement look. White screens are used for a fake blue sky, and you can easily hide windows and lights behind them. You can see my window hidden back there with a lot of candles. I typically don't make window heavy builds anymore, so I was really unsure how much I'd like it. Um, it's a bit intimidating the size, but I think I'm okay with the final result. Having the windows centered here and in the bedroom freed up a lot of options for my walls. I'm trying to show some of the ceiling beams, and I use this Hingen windowed partition a lot for either beams or for corners of the build. The style matches this exposed cement look to pair with my flagstone loft windowsills. And you can see I just hide the bottom of the partition when using it as a pillar. Alright, let's talk about walls. Let's get into it. So, I'm using bathroom tiles that I turned around, and this is a popular and easy method to create a cement look. You'll want to hide a stage panel or something similar to block your camera though, or else it will go right through. To create more texture and add depth to the wall, this steel locker is made to look like a pillar, and I have an additional wooden slat there to alter its appearance. This Enigma partition is perfect for what I think is an industrial look, and you can hide and show as much or as little as you want. I opted to loft it up high in the air to hide some of the cogwheels and steam though. I wanted it to look like exposed piping. Alright, what you've been waiting for. So in my rainy day house, I broke my wallet and a few mines when I bought the flagstone loft and made it as an accent wall behind the sofa. But I wanted to go further beyond. This is probably the most expensive wall I've ever made. <laughs> You'll see that the flagstone loft has this really bumpy texture. It almost looks like plaster the way I put it into the wall with the brick. I spent a lot of time looking up exposed vintage brick and this was the best way I could manage that look. The orange of this brick interior wall isn't my favorite. I don't see it very often. I don't like this color at all, but it fit my needs since it's wall mounted and can be adjusted. I don't know if my madness will ever end or what's in store for me in the housing future, but I don't think anything will top 40 million in flagstone lofts anytime soon. It's worth it though, right? Please clap. Ah <laughs> uh, yeah, so this little table. So I was running out of slots at this point in time <laughs> and I needed to put something here. So what luck that these walnut furnishings have this black metal framing and I think it suits this industrial style. So what next? Mm. Oh, my entry, quote unquote. I've, uh, I've grown out of caring about door styles and entries, uh, just for sake of space. And I think this heavy metal sliding door fits the aesthetic well enough. I'm trying to show you the hinges that I made, but I swear I cannot grab them. But here's a quick glimpse into how I use the Phasmascape to block the camera. And I have several going up and down the length of this massive wall. Okay, this is embarrassing. I cannot grab what I want. Uh, does this happen to anyone else? I'm trying to show that the hinge part of this door is made of two Riviera wall shelves, and the vertical line is a hanging bench. So next is the kitchen. This was a logistical nightmare. I actually started with the loft first though, and they're all antique shelves, and I got this idea from Amphi's abandoned fisherman house. The texture at the bottom is so pretty, but oh my god, the slots. I've never been asked how I made the loft, so this is probably too much for people. Alright, so the cabinets. I really like the wooden back of the small blackboard. It's an easy staple in an ashen build. <laughs> I was very subtle and tried to make line dividers per blackboard to kind of divide up the cabinets, but I don't know if it's entirely noticeable, it might be too subtle. I'm waving this kitchen hanger around to show how I use the sides for a handle. So next is my stove. It's just a simple steel locker dyed gray with a card paper box for the oven door. 
All right, you guessed it, more flagstone furniture, but this time it's the steps mixed in with the lofts. I mentioned being limited on what I put underneath the loft, so I had to stick to these wall items, and I floated my stage panel from the basement below. This chonky shelf is a wooden blind, and I think it's easily one of my favorites for a shelving item, but it has to be turned around. Fake shelves like these are nice because you can hide more of a tabletop item into it without risk of snapping back to the top. So my little kitchen island, it's an easy concept, just wall shelves and dance poles, but again, I am a big fan of brackets and things fitting well, so just look at how the dance poles fit perfectly in place with the shoe racks, oh my god. I think adding a bottom really adds weight to the furniture and it just works. I kind of skipped over the living room, but we're back. Again, an easy concept for a table, a shelf and dance poles, but this time I added the butterfly specimen for little supports. This couch took me a long time to build, I'm not proud to say, but I just suck at building things at an angle. <laughs> The couch concept is from Morgan, who makes really nice modern custom designs. I needed a really low profile sofa that wouldn't hide my back wall, so this is just perfect. You'll see the sides are made of wooden slats. And the back is more small blackboards and wooden blinds. You know, now that I think about it, this build is made of so many wall items. I had to be careful where to build so things wouldn't accidentally snap. This is just a little thing again, but I made my steps slimmer. I'm trying to yank this around to find a flat surface so you can see the difference in width. But what I did was I doubled up the steps. Normally the stairs can fit two people, but mine only fits one at a time. Since this was a wall item and the stairs are very finicky, I couldn't use a stage panel in the back. I had to go with Phasmascapes again, which have been a lifesaver for this wall. <laughs> okay, so here you can tell is when I started to run out of money. <laughs> I was starting to really consider my life and my choices. I could either fully commit and just cover this wall with lofts, or I could break it up and make a textured pattern like it was repaired at some point. I'm showing a window effect I did in the bedroom and what I usually do in my builds is I like to hide a indirect spotlight, especially with daytime windows like these. I think it gives off a nice sun glare effect and it casts shadows. Look how pretty this looks with no lights. I hide a lot of hidden lamps in the ceiling and walls and while the house lights are up, it's less noticeable, but zero lights like these, it shows a beautiful texture. Again, here's another simple walnut dressing table. I'm showing the wall here, which is my budget version of the loft and brick. I actually really enjoyed this look a lot once I discovered it, since it removes a lot of the grout. The Phasmascape is coming in pretty clutch for this build, to be honest. I can't hide anything below because the kitchen's there, so a lot of furniture has to be presented as it normally is. The bedroom took me the longest because of this, and I eventually made a metal canopy bed, but it's not my favorite look due to limitations, but I used two Riviera beds and dance poles for the canopy. I should show you guys what it looks like actually, how the loft is lined up with the kitchen and the challenges I gave myself. While I enjoy pushing my limits and seeing what I can do, sometimes it's like, why though? Oh man, the bike. It's so cute, isn't it? Midori made it for me, and we were struggling to remember what bikes look like. <laughs> She's so creative. We're really blessed to have her brain. It's made of a lot of little parts, namely things like the hanging wall shelf, candlelit sundries, an oasis table, a shirt display, grocery counter. It's madness, guys. I really regret building this in the air. It took an unreasonably long time to get the parts just right. But I want to recreate this in the future. Maybe in a hallway for an entryway I'll finally make. Oh yeah, this heavenly ornamental array. I love how it looks. Very chic. I often have them somewhere in a build of mine.
So my final thoughts. Do I think I nailed this concept? I feel there were a lot of things I could have done better, namely maybe trying to work more with the slanted skylights or something, or fully going crazy with a wall made of lofts. But I like how I made this. I think I captured a warehouse aesthetic. I don't know if people should follow my dark path until lofts go down in price. I hope by showing you how it's done, you'll want to recreate something similar to this in the future. That'd be great. Please follow HGXIV and subscribe for more Break It Down videos and commentary like this. Or you can follow me on Twitter at Ashenbride. I will post links in the description. Bye guys!